JRA 501. I know a lot of us have heard about the Arkansas Exxon Mobil oil spill and uh, how how bad it is. Um, they really don't know exactly how much of a spill there was. Um, they've already recovered 28,200 barrels of oily water. I mean yards of contaminated soil and debris, oily water and debris from Mayflower, Arkansas. That's just in this residential area in Mayflower. And State Attorney General Dustin McDaniel had a hard time trying to uh, get anything out of ExxonMobil to the point that he actually had to subpoena them for documents and data about the Pegasus pipeline. Isn't that interesting? So they don't know the exact makeup of the crude or the chemical solvents used in the transportation process. They're hoping for more documents as lawyers and investigators are getting involved. This rupture caused at least 500,000 gallons of tar sands crude and contaminated water to seep into the Mayflower community. And about 140 live animals were affected, have been captured and cleaned up and released. Unfortunately, uh, when animals are covered in this, they they don't they don't do so well <laughs> even after they're cleaned up and released they're um, it goes into their bodies and it's poison so not to be a Debbie Downer but this is at least they are trying at least they are trying to to clean them up okay but I want to remember 500 gallons so far that they have calculated. And what these people have to look forward to is we're going to take a look at the Enbridge spill in Michigan which was 800,000 gallons of heavy crude that flowed into the Talmadge Creek and then 37 miles down the Kalamazoo River. Now, down here it says that Enbridge, of course, this is, you know, typical. Enbridge believes that at the time of the accident it met or exceeded all applicable regulatory and industry standards as its operations. In its operations. But the Canadian Pipeline Company knew five years before the pipeline ruptured that there were cracks in the section of the pipeline that eventually failed, spilling more than 800,000 gallons. So you can see where I'm going with this. This happened in 2010. I think it was July 2010. And it's still ongoing. In this page, well, in this article tags, you can go in and look at 11 pages of blogs and articles. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just appalling. They decline to pay for, you know, current spill studies and they're a little pissy about having to do any additional dredging in the Kalamazoo River because the elements were so heavy that they sank to the bottom. And um, so in the dog and pony lie show, there is one person who um, actually had first-hand knowledge of this, and that's John Bolenbaugh. You can remix his videos, you can come in and take a look at all this information that he has. He worked for Enbridge. He is a whistleblower. When he saw that they weren't cleaning it up properly, they were covering it up, and uh, they were doing the least amount that they had to do, 
um, because they were so overwhelmed with it. And um, as a result of that, he has had his life threatened. And he's, he's like on the front line trying to fight for all these people that are dying, animals that are dying. And he's putting himself at great risk to do so. Um, so let me just play. This is just... See, you just kind of cover it up. Hope nobody will notice. Two years after the spill, fish 40 miles down the river, dead. Animals dying. A deer found in the water. People dying. I don't like hemorrhage. Why don't you like hemorrhage? Because they just keep ruining other people's lives. That live here then. Tell me it's clean and it's safe. Your company just it's not harmful. But yet. Did they ever try to evacuate you? No, they said if I go outdoors to stay out no more than five minutes. And he died of a seizure in the house three days before she died from cancer. Oh. Yeah, I got two in one week at Christmas. And did you go to the hospital and your, to see your doctor about it? Yeah. And what did your doctor say? She said that's where it came from, the smell. It affected my asthma real bad. And then they had to put me on oxygen. I, my memory is absolutely shot. And you said your lungs are really bad? Uh, yep, I was just diagnosed with emphysema. They said I had the lungs of an 83-year-old man. And you were fine before that? And I was fine before that. And that dog was healthy as a horse until that oil spill. And her, the other people that have a dog, and it's been seriously sick. I think a lot of things contribute to the oil spill. <laughs> I believe six people have died here. We just had another person two days ago die at Baker Trailer Park. I noticed some problems with my lungs that I never had before. Right. Yeah. You know. And I believe that's from all the chemicals you breathe in. Yep. Severe headaches, nausea, fatigue, forgetfulness, all of it. What was your, some of your symptoms that you had after um, the oil spill? I had uh, three seizures at the other house and two seizures where I live now. And my son actually had a uh, an episode where he looked like he was having seizures, passing out. I even took him to the ER. I got migraines. I had a seizure for the first time in my life. This is why we have to stop Embridge and these oil companies from doing this. They're having seizures and they're, they're getting sick from this tar sand oil. Please help us. Okay. So my whole point with this was This is what the people of Arkansas have to look forward to. We only have to go back in history and see what has happened before and how it was handled. So, people in Arkansas should not go back to their homes. It's said in here, where was it? that they were going to start telling people they could go back home. They should be able to return to their homes this week. And maybe eight or nine more could return in the next few days. Seriously? Seriously, they all need to be getting attorneys now. Because this is where this is headed. This is going to go on for years and years, just like, just like, just like what's going on in Michigan.
still going on in Michigan. So we need to come together. We need to have patience and love and tolerance for each other. There's so much bickering going on on YouTube. You know what? To each his own. God bless you all for whatever you are contributing. But contribute something. You don't even have to do anything. You can just remix videos. That's contributing. That's doing a lot. You can you can call. You can call people like Mr. McDaniel. You can call him. You can write to him. You can fax him a letter. Please don't stop. Please help these people because they are going to get sick. There has already been complaints of emerging health problems already, which many have already suspected that the damage may be greater than ExxonMobil claims. Of course it is. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, as always, God bless and uh, we need to come together. <laughs>